All right, this is Kyle Barnes from Whole Armor Ministries here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, it's come to my attention that um, this sermon right here actually does teach what Stephen Anderson would call oneness and what Pastor Manley Perry would also consider a oneness statement, yet it actually comes from his mouth. Now, um, I had no problem with anything he was saying here, and I'm actually present in the congregation. This is me right here, and this is my beautiful wife right here. Um, this is uh, a sermon that he did at uh, Christmas, uh, obviously 2016, and uh, let's just listen to what he has to say. But John the Baptist was the greatest man born of woman. All right. And he was born six months prior to Jesus. So John the Baptist is six months older than his cousin Jesus. But even, even though he's older than his cousin Jesus, there's still a lot of similarities between these two babies and their birth. And I want to point a couple of these similarities out to you this morning. Now, one thing that's interesting, think about it. I, I said there's a lot of similarities between these, between J John and his cousin Jesus. All right. But not only was Jesus John's cousin, he was also his father. What? Think about that. Uh, because Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. <clears throat> Jesus was John's younger cousin, but he was also his older father. Because he's everlasting. Jesus said, I am my father and one. When you've seen me, you've seen the father. Amen. And uh, just so I'm not accused of taking him out of context, let's listen uh, a couple more seconds. Jesus was God incarnate. He was God in flesh, like the story we read about this morning. Amen. Okay, so I'm sure what he'll claim is, yeah, that's what I meant by, by this in this video. Um, no, it's not. Okay, because you're clearly saying the Father, you said it twice, you even said eternal, everlasting Father. And, um, I mean, it's, it's incredibly clear what he's saying. He's saying that Jesus Christ is the Father. Um, I mean, plain as day. Now, this was on December 25th. Now, let's take a look at what he said after the whole Tyler Baker incident happened, and uh, his... Uh, his basically his God, Stephen Anderson, this man that he's idolatrously worshiping, uh, came out and had issues with, um, he had issues with Tyler Baker saying Jesus is the father. So now he's going to have an issue with Jesus, uh, say, or I'm sorry, with anybody saying that. Um, but this is only six months after this. Now over the summer, over that summer, I had a small sermon, a 10-minute sermon, well, actually about 12 minutes, and I uploaded it on my YouTube channel, Whole Armor Ministries, which uh, was me basically talking about the importance of explaining Christ's deity while out soul winning. And I said, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father, you can't be saved, because I came across somebody who was basically saying, yeah, Jesus is God, but he's not the Father. And what he actually meant by that is that Jesus was God, but he didn't create the world. Okay, see, the Father in heaven, when Jesus was talking about the Father to people, it was understood by the saved disciples, uh, the saved followers, anybody saved at that time, and those that didn't get saved, the religious zealots and the Pharisees and everything, they understood that when he was talking about the Father, that he was referring to the Lord Jehovah of the Old Testament. Every single mention of the Lord in the Old Testament was the Father. Okay, and the Bible says quite clearly, right here in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. Okay, see, there is only one God. And if you're denying that Jesus is that one God, you're not saved. And uh, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father. Okay, see, the Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. However, the reverse is also true. 
God is the Father, all right? And God is Jesus Christ. And God is the Holy Ghost. Both statements are true. And just because it says, and one Lord Jesus Christ, doesn't mean that that's the only time he's mentioned, okay? Because he's also mentioned right here. Because it says there's only one God. And if you're saying that this is not Jesus, you're going to go to hell because Jesus Christ is that one God. And if you deny that Jesus is God, he said in John 8, 24, therefore, um, I said therefore unto you that if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Okay, now let's look at what he has to say uh, in this video. Now, this is one of the main go-to verses that people will try to use to justify that Jesus is the Father. This is like the main go-to verse. That He's talking about Isaiah 9, 6. That they often use. Matter of fact, this is the first verse that that gentleman referenced on that video I watched. Talking about Tyler Baker. You want to know what's funny? You know what the first verse that he mentioned in this video was Isaiah 9, 6? He's a hypocrite. He's a railer. He's a false accuser, and there's a video on his channel called um, A Wolf in the, in the Church House calling me a born-again Christian who he knows is saved. He's seen me get people saved before. He's actually learned something from me out soul winning that he picked up. Now, I've learned way more from him, and in fact, praise God that I was even led there. Although, in the wolf uh, sermon, he actually claims that it was Satan that led me there, but... When I went there, I actually learned how to become a better soul winner because I was just throwing verses at people and I didn't have any structure or flow, you know, and I felt like I just had to convince everybody, you know, I thought everybody was just, you know, I just had to nail it down. I went out with him once and I just nailed it down. But there was one time, the last time I went to, went soul winning with him as a partner and I explained to the guy cause he, he kept thinking, you know, yeah, but you know, I just don't think everybody's worthy to go to hell. You know, because I always ask him, you know, when I recap, I'm like, you know, everybody's a sinner. You know that we at least deserve to go to hell. Well, okay. And then he didn't understand it. So I was like, well, remember, you know, you got to be as righteous as God to be in his presence. And Adam and Eve only committed one sin. And afterward, Brother Manley was like, yeah, that was good. Uh, I learned, so I've never used that before. So I was really honored by that. And um, I've learned a lot from him. I love the guy. Uh, even though he's bit me up the back, he's lied about me, he's falsely accused me, and the only reason I was thrown out of Old Path Baptist Church was for two reasons. I shared uh, Brother David Obasi's video, uh, Timotheus. I shared his video where basically it says that Stephen Anderson is taught the same thing as Tyler Baker, uh, which he did, and he uh, he doesn't anymore because he's uh, down the heretic Catholic lane now. But originally he did teach it, and... Uh, Timotheus has shown that in Isaiah in an Isaiah 9 sermon and in a Trinity sermon. And I'm going to show, actually, because I found these other two, Matthew 21 and Matthew 23 sermons, he actually uh, says it again in these videos. Um, but anyway, let's get back to hearing what he has to say now, six months later, about the Godhead, now that the whole Stephen Anderson thing has come out. Mind you, this is coming from a man who has a video literally called Why I'm an Andersonite. Not why I'm a Christian, uh, why I'm an Andersonite. So, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Now let me read that again. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, and his name shall be called, and his name shall be called. And his name shall be called. Does it say his name will be? Or does it say his name shall be called? It what he's implying and what he's going to continue to imply is that somehow, somewhere, somebody believes that the, the, list, uh, the list there at the bottom of Isaiah 9-6 is talking about names. No, it, those are titles given to his name. Now, we know that the name mentioned there is the name of Jesus. Uh, those are all titles given to his name. And uh, you, listen to what he says. He's going to say something blasphemously here in a second. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, first of all, the Bible never says his name. Yeah, I'm present for this, too. There's my head right there. Father. It says his name shall be called. 
That means people are going to call him the everlasting father. Doesn't say his name will be the everlasting father. Doesn't say he... Obviously, since the everlasting father is a title and not a name. So why would anybody claim that as a name? It's not a name. It's a title given to a name. If I say, yeah, Randy is, is my father, you know, his name shall be called Kyle's dad. That doesn't mean Kyle's dad is a name. I mean, what a stupid use of uh, logic. Is the everlasting father. It says people will call him the everlasting father. Amen? Now, no. why will people call him the everlasting father? Because he I'll is. I'll tell you why. The same reason my wife sometimes calls me Mike Perry. False. His, his name, first, first of all, his actual name is Michael Perry. All right. His name is Michael Manley Perry Jr. So what he's going to be talking about is the fact that that's his dad's name. So obviously he's going by his middle name because his dad is go, goes by his first name. But that has no correlation whatsoever. Okay. <clears throat> because uh, you're a junior and you actually have the exact same name as your dad. And if you act like your dad, yeah, he's going to call you that. But that has nothing to do with that verse. His name shall be called Wonderful. And listen to what he says here in a second when he says Jesus' name isn't wonderful. Now, I know what he meant by that. He's saying, uh, you know, same thing that Jehovah's Witnesses say where it says his name alone is Jehovah. Uh, and then it says, uh, where is it? And later in the Psalms, it says his name alone is excellent. Okay. His name is wonderful his name is excellent okay that's those aren't actual names those are uh ex explanations and descriptions of his name um so i know that he didn't mean it but the way that he said it is just didn't sit right you know sometimes i do something sometimes i might say something sometimes i might act just like my dad and you know what my wife says okay mike perry <laughs> Because I'm acting just like my dad. So why do you think they called Jesus the everlasting father? Because he was acting just like his dad. Amen? No, not amen. And anybody that's amening that probably got judged by God because that's blasphemy. And that's literally what Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons teach. Okay? If you say that his name shall be called and, oh, he's just being called the everlasting father because he's acting like him. Or you take the stance of Stephen Anderson and Garrett Kirchway, which say... Oh, it's just saying because he's coming in the name of, which is very similar to what uh, Pastor Manley Perry is saying here. Then you've got to say, oh, well, he's not this verse. Not that he isn't God because that's not what they would ever claim. But they must also claim that this verse is not claiming that Jesus is God. It's just claiming that he's like the mighty God. Because if you're saying his name uh, shall be called the everlasting father because he because he's like the father or he's like his father, then... You've got to take that to its logical conclusion about the mighty God. So he's not the mighty God according to this verse. He's like the mighty God. And he's not the Prince of Peace. He's, you know, he's coming in the name of the Prince of Peace. He's like the Prince of Peace. Uh, it, it's blasphemy is what it is. All because his congregation is all Andersonites. All of them. This church grew so fast so quick not because of god but because andersonites that didn't have the means by which to move to faithful word are congregating down here under this man who is literally committing idolatry against god uh towards stephen anderson there's not a single person in that church that does not know who stephen anderson is uh that may not be the case now but that most certainly was the case then. And I had a buddy go to this church and uh, he literally was introduced by somebody and they asked him that when they were talking to him, they were like, hey, do you know Steven Anderson? Yeah, we're all Andersonites here. Like, like, why are you sitting there just talking about a man all the time, praising a man all the time? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's absolutely bizarre. And uh, only me and my wife out soul winning brought converts to church we were the only ones that were able to get converts to come into church that didn't know stephen anderson outside of that the only other attendees were andersonites now you add now you tell me who was who was god working through okay now let's listen to some more of the heresy he says Look, i act like my dad sometimes 
because, you know, I've got his blood running in my veins. I was raised with him. I grew up in him. I took on a lot of his characteristics. Amen? So it's normal for me to act like my dad sometimes. It's normal for Jesus to act like his dad. See, Jesus was one with the Father. He was with him for all eternity. Amen? He's been with him since the creation, since the beginning of time. Amen? Jesus was one with the Father, and Jesus said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus was the express image of the Father, so it's very natural for Jesus to act like the Father. Amen? It's very natural for people to call Jesus the Father because he acted like the Father. Amen? But look at that. He's literally, he's, all of this is based on his belief that the everlasting Father is a name. The everlasting Father is a title given to a name. The name of Jesus. Because Jesus, according to that verse, his name shall be called. Jesus shall be called the everlasting Father. Period. Second half again. Let's, let's look at that second half again. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Sorry, Counselor, it's shaking the my, mighty God, my joints. The everlasting again. Father, the Prince of Peace. All right now, what do did, what did these things have in common? They're all characteristics or attributes of Jesus. Yeah. These are not his actual. These these are not his actual names. Yeah. These are characteristics and attributes of Jesus. Show me somewhere in the Bible where they called Jesus wonderful. Where well, that was his name. Show me somewhere in the Bible. What are you even talking about? You just got done saying that those are characteristics and not names, and now you're acting like they're names. What is going on here? Or or somebody. Uh, said, your name is wonderful. Or, you know, uh, they wrote a sign and put it over the cross and said, his name is wonderful. They did. Jesus' name's not wonderful, but I tell you... Jesus' name's not wonderful? Now, again, I know what he's saying. His name is not wonderful. His name is Jesus. But that is a beautiful name. That is the only name that's getting me into heaven. And even though that's not what he meant by it, I still don't feel good that he just said that. And what they did do, they went and they saw that his works were wonderful because that's a characteristic, that's an attribute Jesus had of doing wonderful works. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible was his name actually so wonderful. But what it does say in the Bible is that people saw the wonderful things he did. Now, these are not his actual names, but his characteristics. Jesus is not named wonderful, but he does wonderful things. Jesus is not named counselor. Show me where Jesus is named counselor. He's not. That's a really stupid statement. Psalm 33, 11 says, The counsel of the Lord shall stand forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Uh, the Bible is where you go as a Christian to get counsel. It's where you go to learn things about life and everything else. And Jesus Christ is the Bible. The Bible says in John 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Bible is God, and the Word of God is God, and Jesus is the Word of God, and the Word was made flesh. So, of course, Jesus is the counselor. That's an easy one. Now, uh, Jesus' name is also the mighty God. And Jesus' name is also the everlasting Father. He's twisting scripture. But he gives us counsel and he helps us. Amen? Jesus is not the everlasting Father, but he does have the attribute. That makes no sense. Jesus gives us counsel. That's why his name is called the counselor. That's why his name shall be called counselor. Okay, that's why he is the counselor, because he gives counsel. Jesus' name will be called the Everlasting Father because he is the Everlasting Father. He's called the counselor because he will be the counselor. He'll be called wonderful because he is wonderful. I don't understand what you're using in terms of logic, if any, and clearly you're not. What he's doing is trying to earn brownie points, which is why... He listens to every single sermon that Stephen Anderson comes out with, and all, almost all of his sermons are geared to similar topics. ...and the characteristics of an everlasting father. He does have characteristics, and he does act like the everlasting father to us, because he's the only one who will never leave us. He's the only one who will never forsake us. Hey, your dad on this earth may turn his back on you, but praise God, Jesus will never turn his back on you because he's got the characteristics and the attributes of the everlasting father. Amen? He has everlasting fatherly love for us. Now, none other name on this list are his actual, are his actual name.
because nothing on that list is a name. So, but they're things people call him. So Everlasting Father is the same way. Everlasting Father is not his name. He's not the Everlasting Father. Blasphemy. People call him the Everlasting Father. Why? Why is that prophetic? Why is the Holy Ghost prophesying that his name shall be called the Everlasting Father if he is in fact not the Everlasting Father? Is God prophesying of people lying about Jesus? They called him that because he had the characteristics and attributes of his dad. And they called him that because, you know, possibly it could be because, you know, he is a father to us. He has begotten us. Amen. We've been born again. Yep. The Bible says um, of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. So if we're begotten by the word of God, that makes the word of God our father. And you want to know what's funny? Jesus was actually begotten by the Holy Ghost. That would make the Holy Ghost Jesus' Father. But that's funny because the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Word, these three are one. So it makes, I have no problem with that. The Holy Spirit is God's, is the Father of Jesus because he begat him. Uh, by Jesus, through Jesus, we've been born again. So he isn't a type, our Father. This verse does not mean he is the Father. Blasphemy. It says people will call him that. That's my interpretation of this verse. I don't know fully maybe everything that this verse means and stands for. I... Yeah, that's your interpretation of the verse now, six months later. Let's go back and see again what your interpretation was six months prior to this, before all this happened. The Baptist is six months older than his cousin Jesus. But even, even though he's older than his cousin Jesus, there's still a lot of similarities between these two babies and their birth. And I want to point a couple of these similarities out to you this morning. Now, in Jesus, all right, but not only was Jesus John's cousin, he was also his father. Think about that. Uh, because of Isaiah 9, 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus was John's younger cousin, but he was also his older father because he's everlasting. Jesus said, I am my Father and one. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. <laughs> Jesus was God incarnate. He was God in flesh. Amen. And that's what he means. In fact, that's what it means. To say Jesus is God the Father is all that saying is that Jesus Christ is the same person of God. Okay, now there is a distinction, obviously. Tyler Baker believes that. Elliot Ray believes that. Everybody believes that. Because, okay, the Bible, Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know that God has a God? He does. In Hebrews 1, it says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God. Every time the word God's mentioned, it is also talking about the Godhead. Now, that may seem like a contradiction to you, but every time the word uh, God is used, it is talking about the Godhead. Why? Because there's only one God. Yet in Hebrews 1, it says, Un But unto, thy son, unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. O God. And then in the next verse, it says, Therefore, God, even thy God, Hath anointed. You know that God has a God, but it's still that one God. And that one God is the Father. Unto us there is but one God, okay? Only one God. And what is that God? The Father. So if you're saying Jesus is not the Father, and he's not the everlasting Father, you're saying Jesus is not God. Because every time Jesus was talking about the Father in the New Testament, he was referring back to every time that the word Lord was used in the Old Testament. I gave you my honest, humble interpretation, but one thing I do know... No, it wasn't your honest, humble interpretation. It's a complete flip-flop six months later based on the fact that um, Stephen Anderson... Alex, I'm making a video. And this is uh, completely... Uh, this is six months later... 
after this, because of the fact that Steven Anderson came out against Tyler Baker. Had that never happened, he would not have flip-flopped. In fact, a few weeks before this, I, on a Thursday night preaching thing, which I really miss, I miss this church. I love this church. I really did. But the, the Andersonite idolatry, it, it just got, got to me. It got to the whole thing. And I'll explain. Um, I'm pretty sure I already mentioned why I got kicked out um, in another video. But I'm not sure if that video went through. But anyway, um, so I made a video about the importance of preaching Christ's deity. And uh, he said amen throughout the whole thing. He was saying amen, amen, amen. But then he got a call from Steven Anderson or somebody else that was like, hey, you know, did you know that Kyle also said that this? And then he came at me and they called me and he was like, hey, you know, I just got to make sure you don't believe in oneness. No, I don't. Nobody believes in oneness. Oneness Pentecostalism is heresy. Nobody believes that. Okay, we believe that there is but one God, the Father, period. I mean, I don't know what the issue is. This one verse does not trump all the other verses that I showed you that Jesus cannot be the Father. Jesus. That's nonsense. John 14, Philip saith unto him, uh, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto them, saith unto him, Have I been so long with thee, Philip, and hast thou not known me? The man, Christ Jesus, was referring of the Father in the first person, as though he was the Father. Why? Because I and my Father are one? That's why. And uh, Brother David Obasi has um, a video with two, two of these that I know I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So I'm going to just get to this. This is Steven Anderson. Because um, he said, oh, it was a slip of the tongue in those two videos. Well, here's two more, and I'm sure there's more of them. I'll send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. sermon so you're welcome to go and listen to this i need to go listen to the whole thing i've lost the place in here uh where he says that uh god is the father or <clears throat> jesus is god the father but in this one right here he definitely i mean says it plain as day this is the way it sounds and then uh, father he says no that's god the father that's jesus christ it's called the everlasting father in isaiah 9 6 and then he says another one is master don't call yourself master and I was thinking to myself, how we have these Bible colleges in our day, you know, and, and 
and let's face it, they're patterned after worldly colleges. I mean, it's like they took a, a, a university college and they just added Jesus. They poured on a little Jesus and now they got a Bible college. And so because of their conformity to the world, they actually hand out a master's degree. And when you get that degree on your wall, and the take sounds, for what is your master, even Christ? After that, he says, neither be called masters. This Christ and suck up all that worship and praise of men. He's up there and just takes it all in. Why? Because he's, he's an antichrist on earth. That's, and we have three titles that Jesus is saying, look, these titles are reserve master, even Christ. And, you know, so we have three titles that Jesus is saying, look, these titles are reserved for God. Here it is. He says, one of them's rabbi. Because uh, apparently from reading this, rabbi seems to be the Jewish word for master. Is the way it sounds. And then uh, father. He says, no, that's God the father. That's Jesus Christ. It's called the everlasting father in Isaiah 9, 6. And then he says, that's Jesus Christ. It's called the everlasting father in Isaiah 9, 6. Oh, that's God the father. That's Jesus Christ. It's called the everlasting father in Isaiah 9, 6. Oh, that's God the father. That's Jesus Christ. It's called the everlasting father in Isaiah 9, 6. Oh, that's God the father. That's Jesus Christ. It's called the everlasting father in Isaiah 9, 6. It's not a mistake. It's not a misquote, okay? And I know that he says it in this because I just listened to this sermon because I still listen to his old stuff because you could tell that the Spirit of God was working in him uh, early on in his ministry when he was fasting and he was he was right with God. Now he's just a lying, railing, uh, just wicked, wicked man. And um, this man is trying to model himself after this man. The things that this man has said and lied about me and the, the defamation... What I did to get kicked out of Old Path Baptist was two things. On Facebook, I shared a video uh, on my personal timeline of uh, Timotheus, Brother David Obasi, making a video that said uh, Stephen Anderson preaches the same thing, preached the same thing as Tyler Baker, and he included Isaiah 9 in a Trinity sermon um, that he had done. And then I shared it, and then I shared it with somebody else. And then when I shared it with somebody else, the fact that I said, hey, you know, look, you know, he's preaching that he taught the same thing as Tyler Baker did. Um, in defense of the fact that Tyler Baker was being called Judas Iscariot, which is the name of the man who murdered my Lord and Savior, that's not a name you give to another brother in Christ. You don't call someone the name of the most evil human being that's ever walked the earth. That's wicked as hell. Okay, number one. And uh, so that got me kicked out, that one thing. And then um, when I shared it on my original Facebook, somebody commented and uh, said something about like, oh, what, Tyler? I thought Tyler was saved. And then I responded, I said, oh, but Pope Raylerson's the one that determines if someone's saved, don't you know? So I called him Pope Raylerson, but like literally three to five minutes later, and somebody that was monitoring me took a screenshot and I guarantee, I guarantee that screenshot doesn't say over 10 minutes. Because I deleted that thing almost immediately because I I repented of it because I realized uh, how ridiculous it was and how hip hypocritical it was to call somebody basically.